Your e-bike might be silent, but the heckles from the peanut gallery will be deafening. <laughs> and skateboarding is looking more and more appealing these days. <laughs> this sport is looking a lot like dirt biking now. <laughs> Everyone's doing e-bikes review because it's just part of the game. There's too much money to be made. You're so much better at reading pink bike comments than I am. <laughs> I'm like all cross-eyed. People get pretty heated about e-bikes, huh, Bruce? Yeah. Yeah, seems like it's probably a good idea for us to do a shop talk episode about it then. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm Spencer. I'm Bruce. This is Shop Talk. Oh, is this episode really a good idea, Spencer? There are so many e-bike haters out there. It's true. There's a little bit of debate about the role e-bikes should play in the world of bikes, but they're here to stay, folks. I mean, we're, we're gonna have to learn to love them. And I'd say, let's start by talking about e-mountain bikes. Personally, mm. I think e-mountain bikes are kind of appealing. Yeah, they definitely offer a lot of advantages over say an acoustic mountain bike. You know, you can ride more often when you're tired, when you're doing recovery rides. The national champ, Keegan Swenson, he's an e-mountain bike for recovery rides. See him post about it on Instagram all the time. You're yeah. right, you're right. And definitely they let you take on some like challenging, rides that maybe you can't do on an acoustic mountain bike. I think also the biggest point is just that e-bikes are fun, so right? So fun, Mountain so bikes fun. are supposed to be fun, e-bikes definitely fun. Hard to argue with that, but I'm sure you will. So if you haven't already jumped to the comments to flame us, let's talk a little more about some of the key features e-bikes have that you should be familiar with if you're serious about checking it out. So the first key thing, obviously, the e-bike motor. Now the motor usually on e-mountain bikes especially, it's a mid-drive motor. It's mounted down near the bottom bracket so it's nice and low. We got a lot of great options, Shimano, Bosch, Bros, Specialized are probably the most common. And the thing about a mid-drive motor is it provides the most natural feel when the mm. motor assists you because it's driving off of the bottom bracket. It's not coming from the rear wheel where it might feel a little more pushy. It's kind of like riding with a tailwind, I find. Yeah, and what's really cool about these pedal assist motors is that the harder you pedal, the more they assist. Definitely feels really natural, I think. Exactly, up to a point. Now, you should know there's three different classes of e-bikes, and the ones that we're concerned with, really, class one e-bikes. And class one is a max speed of 20 miles per hour for the electric motor assist, and a max wattage of 250 watts for the assist. So you'll eventually hit that governor, and the motor will stop helping you out. Now, of course, if you have a motor, you need a way to power it, and that's where the battery comes in. It's usually found in the down tube of the bike. And it works like a battery. You can recharge it, remove it, and then finally, you need a way to control it. There's some apps on your smartphone. A lot of e-bikes will have a little readout display that's mounted to the handlebar, mm -hmm. or sometimes they'll just have a really sleek button with a LED light that lets you know what your battery level is or something like that. Yeah, and in a lot of cases too, this controller lets you choose the amount of pedal assist you want. You have like eco modes all the way up to, let's say some people call it boost or turbo. This is Cuban Nas. You guys are crazy. The super fast mode. Yeah, it just depends on how much punch you want to get out of that electric motor. And it also depends on how much battery life you want to get out of it. Bruce. What do we got for options these days? Well, it's really cool. The industry has gotten to the point where you have a lot of diverse options. And here we have two bikes on different ends of the spectrum. Yeah, different philosophies really, wouldn't mm -hmm. you say? Yeah, with the Bullet, the Santa Cruz Bullet, it's a shred sled. Yeah, this is a bike that's basically 50 pounds. Yep. About nine to 10 pounds heavier than the Orbea. And 170 mils of travel, coil sprung. It's clearly meant for a different type of rider, a different type of riding experience. Mm -hmm. And they're sort of outfitted differently to sort of suit that. Yes, the motors, that's where it really gets interesting, right? Yeah, this has got the Shimano EP8000 with 85 Newton meters of torque. That's a very powerful motor. Mm -hmm. Proven platform, a Shimano steps line while the Orbea has a much lighter motor, which is the EP8RS. And Orbea even went to Shimano and specifically had them tune the power to make it smooth, to make it efficient, to match the trail riding experience that's designed into this Rise bike. Whereas, you know, the torque on the Santa Cruz is just like full gas. Yeah, it hits hard. Now, to match the motors, they've got different batteries also. 100%. The bullet here, it's got a 630 watt hour battery, the biggest battery available right now. That's right, you really need it because you got a heavy bike, mm -hmm. pushing a lot of torque with that motor. On the other hand, Orbea's Rise, the battery is really the centerpiece of this 
light and fast philosophy where they've pared it down, make it as small as possible, which helps make the bike more efficient. Um, and it has half the watt hours of the Santa Cruz, which is pretty significant. Now you can add an auxiliary battery for an eight hour range, according to Orbea, when you're riding real gentle on it. Um, but still, you know, the, the philosophy with the Rise is to make it feel like a normal trail mountain bike. Yeah, whereas the Bullet, I think if you're the type of rider who is saving as much as possible going uphill for the downhills, that's probably what it's better for. It's a chairlift bike. Yeah. And I think, you know, for me, my everyday rides, I could see myself riding this Orbea Rise. I think it's cool that it, it sort of fades into the background a little. It's not like quite as much of a full-on e-bike experience. Uh, well, I want that full-on e-bike experience, so it's the bullet for me. Okay, all right, well, yeah. all right, all right. But I mean, which one's faster? Oh, you thinking what I'm thinking? I think we gotta settle this in the streets. Drag race time. Let's go. Nice bike. What's the retail on one of those things? More than you can afford, pal. Santa Cruz. Turn traction control off. Launch control. Make sure we're boost. Damn it, Bruce. God. Yes, power! <laughs> he knows it doesn't matter what's under a hood. The only thing that matters is who's behind the wheel. It shows you something about how the motors behave, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was interesting. The Santa Cruz pretty consistently was faster off the line. That comes down to that torque. Like we said, the motor has more torque, um, but once you hit the top speed of 20 miles per hour, once they're both maxed out at 250 watts. Yeah, they, they hold steady with each other. Don't thanks. forget to like, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Uh, I don't know, maybe we'll pick a favorite comment and send them a used nine volt battery as a prize or something. Oh, I, I love those. <laughs> Whiskey throttle. Yeah, power can be intoxicating.